As you may know, or may not know, I became president of Shari Tefila just a few short months ago. And now, the big day has arrived, or so I've been told. This is my big day. And I'm really grateful to look out and see so many of my friends here today, because they give me the courage to continue. <clears throat> 56 years ago, my parents hurried over here to Shari Tefila to register me and my sister for religious school. We and Shari Tefila were both new to this neighborhood at the time. My father's family had belonged to a conservative shul for many generations. My great-grandfather would go almost every day for Minyan, but my home was distinctly secular. We went to services on the High Holy Days, and we celebrated Hanukkah and Passover at home. I imagine a reformed synagogue with services which were primarily in English and a religious school which met only one day a week seemed like a perfect fit. So you can imagine that it was quite a shock to my parents when I found my faith, my own Judaism, here. Somehow, Shari Tefila became the place where I sought refuge from my family during my teen years. <laughs> yeah, I came to Friday night Shabbat services. That was despite my parents' resistance. <laughs> they weren't expecting me to turn into that kind of Jew. But yet, when I came here, I was embraced by the congregation. Now at the time, they seemed like old people, but I'm guessing they were a lot younger than I am now. <laughs> I became a TA in the religious school, and I made friends in Tasty, our youth group. And together, the youth group shocked this congregation when we played a guitar on the bima. <laughs> so, when my husband and I got engaged, we joined Shari Tefila because I couldn't imagine being married anywhere else. Flash forward 12 years. When it came time to register our children for religious school, it was my turn to be a shocked parent. A lot had changed here. Religious school met more than one day a week. I didn't recognize many of the prayers because they were now being taught and said in Hebrew. And with that other translation, when I was raised, it was the S and T. Now it was all with the T. New melodies had been introduced. And even the ones that were the same had changed. Like the Shema. The melody was the same. But when I was growing up, we were called upon to rise and proclaim the watchword of our faith. And we rose as a congregation and belted out the Shema at the top of our law. Now I was being told perhaps I should cover my eyes or close my eyes and say it a little more quietly and think about it while I proclaimed this prayer. So, I adjusted and learned new ways to worship alongside my kids. After all, I was Ben and Sarah's mother, and I didn't want to embarrass them any more than necessary. <laughs> and somehow, my kids also felt embraced by this community. Shari Tefila became an important place for them as well, for learning and for connection, and frankly, for a respite from school and from their parents, that was me. <laughs> and yet, many years later, it was because of Sarah, I joined my first Share Tefila committee as an adult. It was the youth committee. And the founder of the youth committee, Ruth Bayowitz, thought it would be a good idea to have youth leaders and adults on the same committee. So Sarah and I both got the invitation, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to embarrass my daughter by doing that. And she said, oh, come on, Mom, it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> so here I am. I am now president of Shari Tefila. It's not a role that I 
or my parents or my grandparents would ever have expected. Over the years, a lot of things have changed here. There have been at least five different rabbis, at least four different cantors, more than three different prayer books. Even this sanctuary was redesigned, putting in a center aisle and removing the individual chairs and putting in pews. But in spite of all these changes, some things have remained constant. It remains a spiritual home, a place for support for life cycle events, during challenging times, and for great joys. It's a place to study and learn and connect with others. It's a caring community dedicated to helping people in need, both within our own Shari community and in the broader world. It's a home where I know I will always be warmly welcomed as a member of the family. As president, I'm committed to giving back to Share to ensure that this continues to be a spiritual home for all of you, that there are opportunities for you to worship, to study, to learn, to help others, and to connect with each other and that each of you feels warmly welcomed when you come through these doors. And I know that our board and our clergy and our staff feel the same way, but we can't do it alone. Shari depends on you, too. We need your involvement, your enthusiasm, and we really appreciate the decision you've made to continue to be part of our community. I wish I could stand here and say that Shari Tefila could do all these wonderful things relying only on your dues, but it cannot. And so we rely on your generosity as well. Your board has already made pledges, and once again, they have dug deep, committing over $110,000 to match increased gifts by you to our annual appeal. So now, I'm asking you to dig deep too. Your ticket contains an opportunity to make a pledge to our annual appeal. Our ushers will be coming around the sanctuary to collect your pledges. Please, be as generous as you can. Thank you in advance for joining me and joining the board in investing in our community. Over this year, this first year of my presidency, I hope to have the opportunity to meet each of you and to hear your story. You're all part of my family, and I want to hear your story. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I wish you and your family a sweet and healthy year. Shana Tova. Shana Tova.